I like bacteria because they're simple. Most higher organisms have very complicated genomes, uh, whereas the simplest genomes for organisms that are free living, that can do everything necessary to live, are bacteria. We already know that if we kill all of the bacteria that are living with you, you will die. So the bacteria are really important to keep you alive. And they do this in ways that we don't completely understand. So for instance, we know that there are some bacteria that are killed by other bacteria that live inside us, many pathogens. If I look at every single bacterium living with you, I will find many pathogens. But they don't cause problems because the other bacteria stop them from growing. We also know that bacteria are able to secrete materials, proteins, compounds, that will stop some cancers from growing. And so a good way to think about this is to think that bacteria have made us their home. And you know that the first thing that you do when you buy a home is you protect it from invaders. You don't want robbers to come in and steal all of your stuff so that you have a nice home to live in. Mm -hmm. And I think bacteria feel the same way. They want to protect their home. And so they do lots of things that are very good for us. You know, you have to realize the pharmaceutical companies, when they sell drugs, they want a drug that you have to take for hopefully the rest of your life because then they have a market for the rest of your life. And so the, the pharmaceutical companies like drugs that you have to keep taking. But if the drug cures the disease, like an antibiotic, then they sell a few, but then you don't want to buy them anymore. And so the, the size of the market is very small. And for them to find new antibiotics is a big investment, and they don't get the return on the investment that they want. It, it's not that that is a problem, from a business standpoint, it's a perfectly reasonable business standpoint, mm -hmm. but it's not good for us if we rely only on the pharmaceutical companies to take care of our health. Governments and, and maybe private industry too need to find a better way of finding the drugs that will cure diseases. The very best medicine we have are vaccines because vaccines cost relatively little and they provide protection against outbreaks of infectious disease. Problems associated with them are very, very rare, very remote. But if you don't get vaccinated, then the costs of treating the diseases that you weren't vaccinated against when you got them are huge. So it is, it is terrible for people to think that they should not be vaccinating their children. I would get vaccinated and I would vaccinate my children with every vaccine that I can get that is relevant to the infectious diseases that are present in the country in which I live. Well, I think if you want to be a good scientist, the first thing you have to be curious. So you have to wonder how everything works. And the sad thing is that almost all children from about age two onwards, they're natural scientists. They want to know how everything works around them. And unfortunately, very often, we send them to school and we knock that curiosity out of them. We stop them from potentially being good scientists by making them memorize things that are boring, by teaching them in a way that makes science a very boring subject. And I think we also sometimes knock it out of them because most people who are curious and innovative and creative, they're rebels. They don't want people telling them what to do. They want to do their own thing. And so I think we need to find a way to encourage more kids to be creative and not be quite so rigid in the way we teach them. So that, you know, if you've got someone who is obviously very talented, very creative, let them break the rules. It's, it's not the end of the world. Almost every good thing that happens in this world comes from people breaking the rules.